Repair work on a broken water main in Calgary was stalled after two workers were injured on site yesterday evening. I am happy to tell you that neither are in critical condition. They did sustain serious injuries. One's been treated and released and the other remains in hospital. I want to thank these individuals for the hard work that they have been doing and want them to know that we are thinking of them and their families. Crews have completely completed that as a safety review and are now expected to resume their work fully. Officials say fully restoring the water service will take longer than expected and they're still determining a timeline. Officials are also urging residents to reduce their water use following a rise in consumption levels. They say water supply levels are lower than it has been over the past few days. For more analysis, we're joined now by Trisha Stadnick. She is a professor at the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary, and she is the Canada Research Chair in Hydrologic Modeling. Uh, thanks for being here, Trisha. Thank you. you. You have been warning about these issues over five years now. Judging by what we are seeing in Calgary, how serious is this issue of infrastructure neglect, not just in Calgary, but across the country? Yeah, the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering uh, over five years ago released a report along with an infrastructure assessment that dates back from the Canadian government to 2019, warning about aging infrastructure across Canada and uh, water infrastructure was named as part of that. And it's about 30% of the water infrastructure in Canada that is at or nearing the end of its service life. Wow. Okay. So given the recurrent drought conditions and the water main break in Calgary, should Alberta be rethinking its infrastructure? I mean, it's a difficult thing to say without knowing the complete picture of what happened and what caused this. It's my understanding that the section of pipe that failed that has now been removed and is being replaced has been sent to a different facility for analysis. Once that analysis comes in, then the engineers will have a much better idea of what caused the failure. There are a number of things that could have caused the failure and a number of aspects of the pipe that mm. could have failed. But absolutely across Canada, we need to start looking seriously at replacement and sustainability of our infrastructure and just quite frankly, funding the replacement of this aging infrastructure. So, you know, obviously this is a big wake up call for the city of Calgary. Uh, and as you say, it should be for, for the rest of the country as well. Why do you think it is that our, our country's infrastructure is so neglected? I mean, part of the aging process is literally just time. The other part of it is the stress of the conditions that infrastructure is exposed to. And so in Canada, it's no secret, we have a pretty harsh climate. Um, we have seasonal climate that me means that our roads get cold and we have to uh, put salt and other uh, chemicals on that road. And that mixes with the water come spring and come the melt and, and the rainstorms and that infiltrates into the soil. And we have to remember that underneath these paved roads and these soils is a whole network of pipes that we can't see. And so unlike buildings that are aging and starting to crumble and bridges, engineers can see the cracks and they can say, you know what, maybe we should do some more repair work. Um, the infrastructure that's under our feet, as everyone's seen from the pictures in the media, is hidden under the soil and it's very labor intensive to be able to expose it to actually do an examination. So, you know, out of sight, out of mind right. in a way, um, but it's still very critical. It, it, the repairs on this water main in, in Calgary, they're taking longer than anticipated and, and water usage in the city has increased once again. How long do you think until this becomes a, a much larger issue for the citizens of Calgary? Yeah, well, there's been a, a series of unfortunate events, right? So from the original timeline or time frame. Um, last Saturday of five to seven days, a couple of things have occurred. So first of all, they did an inspection on the pipe once it was exposed, and they did find some other segments of the pipe aside from the segment that was extremely damaged that needed some work. Uh, we don't know the extent of the repairs, but we do know that that added to the timeline. And then unfortunately last night, two, in, two workers got injured on the job. And of course, like any workplace, it needs to be shut down and a proper investigation of workplace hazard and safety needs to be conducted. It's my understanding that the, the repairs have commenced once again, but of course that's another 24 hour delay. So I think what we're realistically looking at uh, is end of next week, best case scenario. Uh, it could push through next weekend as well. 
Wow. Okay. Uh, just before I let you go, any uh, advice to jurisdictions across the country in terms of maintaining their infrastructure on a regular basis and, and ensuring you know something like this does not happen? Yeah, I mean, the cost cannot be borne only by the cities and the municipalities. This is absolutely a full-pronged approach where we have to have provincial and federal funding in order to tackle this infrastructure problem. And really what it comes down to is a security issue. In this particular case, a water security issue. Um, we, we see considerable disruption when we have to do emergency repairs because of a catastrophic failure. Uh, that is not the point that we want to be at. We want to be doing this proactively instead of reactively. Okay, good advice. Trisha, thanks so much. That is Trisha Stadnick, a professor at the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary.